178. I am your host, Norman Sanzu. Joining me today is James. Hello, everybody. Hey, Norman. Hey, James. How are you doing, man? Uh, can I have the uh, call of friend? Uh, Jack in the box, please. I don't want to answer that question. I want my friend to answer it. Well, okay. I'll give you that. And joining us today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing, man? Melting like a candle. The heat's been crazy for the past six days. But I'm surviving. And also joining us is Kyle. Howdy, everyone. How are you all doing? Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. Well, how about you? I'm... Pretty good, can't complain. The weather here is tropical. It appears we've uh, imported our weather from Hawaii, so uh, if anyone wants some tropics, you're welcome to take ours. Define tropical. Define tropical, it's hot, wet, and clammy all at the same time. Temperature, give me numbers. What temperature did you guys have? Uh, we'll put it this way, if I were to put my tongue into a, a drink of Coca-Cola, I'd be going, ooh, that's a bit warm. Is it in the 40s? It depends. If we're talking Fahrenheit, that would be freezing. If we're talking Celsius, I don't know. <laughs> Celsius. Celsius. Yeah, that's hot. Too hot for your climate, man. Come on. Oh, for Scotland, I mean, like, you know, we're looking at this going like, uh, wow. This you're in the 20s. Hot does not exist in this country, you know, like, you know, 15 degrees is what we consider to be a good summer. So if we ever go above but, that, we're taking as a bonus. But remember, climate, wo- uh, global warming is not a thing. It's a myth. It doesn't exist. <laughs> It's created by the corporations and the United States president to cause a state of fear. Actually, it's, it's not caused by them. It's actually caused by the fact that I've got so many consoles hooked up to my TV that it's actually causing Inverness heat to just cook the planet. If I just unhook some of these, we'd actually be all right. Actually, here, hang on, I'm going to unhook one now. Oh, God. Okay, PS4 is getting turned off. No, actually, I can't turn it off. It's doing a download. No! Uh, I'll turn on something now. Turn off the Xbox Wait, One if you have this. one. Like, oh, Wait, crazy, you, do, you have an Xbox One anyway? I don't, I mean. I don't have an Xbox One. I have taste. <laughs> oh, good, good. A smart person. Oh. You're a smart man. <laughs> wow. But wait, Kyle, aren't you Scottish? Don't you have a kilt to wear? Like, isn't that made for cooling down? Uh, the kilt is indeed Scottish, but uh, I hate the kilt and many Scottish things with a passion because <laughs> I do have a bit of English in me and I think there's some sort of correlation there, but... No, betrayal! I, I, <laughs> betrayal! Betrayal! I am not... Betrayal! That, betrayal. There's a great thing about a Spanish guy telling a Scottish guy that he's betraying his country. There's no... You don't you get to betrayal. tell... Betrayal! <laughs> betrayal! No, shut up! I'm gonna go eat my bangles and mash and watch Mr. Bean. Oh, explain uh, it quickly. I thought they watched Doctor Who now. <laughs> what? No, Mr. Bean is better than Doctor Who. What are you talking about? Ooh! Ooh. It's so much... Oh, come on. It is so much better. At least I can take Mr. Bean not seriously. <laughs> Doctor Who just takes itself so seriously. Oh, come on. It's it's that... Mr. Bean is so much more likable than Doctor. Than the Doctor. Come uh, on. Uh, come on. It's not that bad. Like, I mean, Doctor Who is awesome. There's some fun episodes. I will get excited when MLP makes a reference to Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one day maybe. One day maybe. They already did it for the entire show, man. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that came from? Uh, That's from the Mr. Bean movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, that first one. I don't know. What that was think. a good, that, that actually was a, <laughs> that was very good. I, I, was I very honestly fun. don't know what to think because I do remember was... it. It was fun, but I don't remember, like, was it good? Was it a eight or It was very Mr. Bean. It was very Mr. Bean in its nature. I will, I wouldn't even go that far. I will give it a six because it's what they take when they take a uh, franchise to the US. They kind of like Americanize it or something, but uh, still had that, that unique charm that Rowan Atkinson brings to the character of Mr. Bean. So. Mm, but I do like the second one. Mr. Bean goes to, well, I don't remember. It's the vacation movie. That was pretty fun. I didn't fun. watch that. Was I didn't watch that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch that one. I think I was growing out of Mr. Bean that time when I was like, you know, teenager. Oh, broody. I only watched last one through your movies and listening to my chemical romance. <laughs> oh, That's wow. Kind of... yeah, I, 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 yeah, I had. Sorry to merge my time. chemical romance with a man going, and then wandering around. You know, it's it, the, the rage of my chemical romance <laughs> and Mr. Bean do not go well together. Like, <laughs> sorry, I'm just. Oh, what? Wow. I don't, no, I don't watch Dark Tales or 
like Disney cartoons, I only watch Robot Chicken. <laughs> wow, Mr. Hipster here. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I was unbearable. You didn't want to talk to me between 2001 and 2005. God, I was having <laughs> You didn't. You didn't. I I don't know. I mean, thinking about it, right? Like, what this fandom does to us, like, gather people from all over the world just to talk in this podcast is quite interesting. Like, if you think about it, way back when, we had the internet, but we were not communicating. And the reason why is because we were cynical. We... Yeah. Uh, was yeah, all that, well, that, that it, the it, internet it, it is... It is true, but to throw a stone at the current generation, the current generation is as cynical or even worse than our past generation. It's like, we guys who are like, what, what are we, like, what, Norman, you are like a thousand years old, right? Yeah, so, I'm, like, yeah, something like that. Yeah, a few hundred but years I mean, plus in that. Yeah, a few, a few hundred. But yeah, it's like, for those of us who are not in the place to send us period, like, of, of, uh, the, the world, uh, God, yeah, we were very cynical back then, but now people are just, oh, God, can you just yeah. please tone it down a little? <laughs> well, it's definitely true. I mean, I think that's partially the internet's fault is the fact that, you know, like, there was that point where, you know, we, we discovered sarcasm and that was like a great weapon. It was something great and fun to use. And then suddenly we used sarcasm to mock other people and then mock what they were doing. And then we've suddenly discovered another layer of sarcasm yeah. where we're now sarcastic about being sarcastic about being sarcastic about those sarcastic people. And that suddenly it's like, you know, just like, Really? Have we gotten to this point? Like, you know, I mean, or, in Scotland, sarcasm hasn't developed as much as other countries because until roughly three years ago, in order to actually get an internet connection, you had to use a crank. So there was, <laughs> you know, we were, we were a bit behind the times. I mean, but mind you, it was Scottish like that, people, though. Oh, it was, but it's like, you know, we're, we're catching up, but yeah. we kind of, we, I mean, the Scottish idea of diplomacy and of sarcasm is a bit more blunt than other countries. I mean, let's put it that way. Dude, dude, you, you, that's nothing. In Spain, in order to get an internet connection, you had to sacrifice a goat and paint a <laughs> pentagram with blood on the floor. Oh, and yeah, that's I, only if you were lucky. I remember that. I remember that when they released God of War in Europe. Remember that? <laughs> oh, gosh. I've got a no, vague memory. Like, or, or, even, or even worse, the case where people are cynical and all that, but then they watch these cartoons. That, that the Current cartoons, mother, I think the Nostalgia Critic did a piece on this when he's talking about how cartoons nowadays are much better than cartoons back mm. then because they were they are able to talk about current subjects and teach kids something without them knowing they are being taught something. Mm -hmm. And then you have these teenagers watching these cartoons and they're like, oh yeah, this and that. And then they bring their own flavor of cynicism to them. And... Mm -hmm. Downright ruin them for all of most all of all of us watching them. Yeah, true that. <laughs> but you have to remember that we as adults or we as grown ups or shows that are now out there are created by the kids who watch cartoons back in the days. So Yeah, and I am so glad that they actually are producing good cartoons. It's like someone producing something that grew up in the nineties, if they produce something that is actually good and, and awesome they are doing it, but not based on what they were watching during the 90s, because the 90s was... That was the dark ages of everything. Yeah. The really? Dark ages that... big, the dark ages of video games, the dark ages of cartoons, the dark ages of movies. It's like, what? You had movies like Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, Steel. Just talking about the superhero movies, oh my gosh. It's like <laughs> the advent of Adam Sandler, the birth of Michael Bay as a blockbuster director. A time period during, during which OK was spectacularly good. Like, mm -hmm. you had cartoons like Quack Pack and uh, The Mighty Ducks. Oh, oh. oh, but there were so uh, many great shows at that point. I mean, I would argue that there was a there great... Are many good sh yeah, there are many great shows. Like, Peeper Pe 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 was really good. Same, same with Recess and mm -hmm. The Proud Family. That was good. Uh, Gargoyles can count as Animaniacs. really good. Mm -hmm. Animaniacs, Batman, the animated series. But... A good grief! The, the the good was so much, so so little compared to the bad, with what is what it was like. Uh, the, the, now it's kind of like the norm to have something that is great, and then it's kind of the exception to have something that is terrible. Yeah, I mean, during back in the days when we talk about anime, the first anime I watched ever was, if I do remember right, was. Uh, Dragon Ball. So you can tell that like, how our lives were revolved around the 90s. Like we are talking about the time period during which Adam Sandler was making good <laughs> movies. That's oh. how bad it was. Oh yeah, 
Hey, but yeah, still, like but the, the, the Water Boy and, ha- and uh, Happy Gilmore or whatever it was yeah, the yeah. name of that yeah. movie. Those were actually pretty funny. Oh. Now things have reversed, <laughs> which I, it's so good. But oh god. Hey, but still, but still, talking about movies, um, Lion Gate. We all know them, right? They produce a lot of good movies. Like Li- actually, speaking of Lion's Gate, mm-hmm. yeah, they are the guys behind uh, movies 300? like Three Hundred, uh, Hellboy, and Hellboy Two. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, was they, they involved with good. Pacific Rim? No, that's Legendary Pictures. All oh, right. I don't know if Lionsgate uh, like promoted the the movie outside of the US or something, but yeah, yeah. In didn't they make a deal with Hasbro to release the My Little Pony movie worldwide? Yeah, they did, they did. And well, it's been a while since I do did this, but Ro, could you please read the blurb that they put out here? And the movie A New Dark Force threatens Ponyville. And the main six, Twilight Sparkle, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and Rarity, embark on an unforgettable journey beyond a quest chair where they meet new friends and exciting challenges on a quest to use the magic of friendship and save their home. The My Little Pony film will feature all new music with the main six characters voiced by Tara Strong, Kathy... Wise luck. Thank you. Sorry, I'm terrible with names. Andrea Lidman, Tabitha St. Germain, and Esley Ball... Jason Thesis, oh, Jason Thiessen is directing. Brian Goldner, Goldberg, <laughs> I apologize, Linda, I am terrible with names lately. And Stephen Davis are producing the film with Megan McCartney and Michael Vogel, co-executive producing. Well, this is new info. Like the story, we get the story, and the best part is our favorite voice actors are still there. Well, well it's ready to get forward to get rid of them. Did you want to have Rarity Boys by Megan Fox and Toilet Sparkle Boys by, I don't know, the the girl who was, uh, oh, what was the um, name of this? Actress? Bella? Yeah. Rice Dallas Howard? Uh. No, no, Bella will definitely boys Fluttershy. <laughs> oh, wow. She, they, they are going to be, yeah, and Shia LaBeouf will be Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Just oh, yeah. do it! And Gilbert Goldfrey is Discord. Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah. 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 that human yeah. would be brilliant as Discord. Yeah. And of course, yeah. Kirsten Stewart will end up being no, Fluttershy. No, wait. John Delancey has, has power. Like, he has star power. He doesn't need to be replaced. Yeah, but uh, Gilbert Gottfried is the ultimate in like, trolls. Oh, like, no. like, he is, like, have you, have you heard of Gilbert Gottfried? Oh, God. No, yes. No, I don't want him to voice anything. Oh, God. Have him read Fifty Shades of Grey. That sounds. He did. He did. He did. Yeah, I know. I know that. I know that. I I, I saw the video. Oh, I saw wow. the video. No, but uh, back... I was going to say something really smart and really interesting, but I completely <laughs> forgot about it. Sorry. No, but back on this, like, um, one of my fears was that they didn't want to use the current voice actors for the show <laughs> because of, well, you know, what have we learned from DreamWorks? That is, if you if you cast big stars beyond say Mike Myers or anyone else, you'll get people coming into the theaters just to see or hear their voices. And this one, I think they did a smart move by not doing that because what made the show was the current stars, like the current voice actors. They are already awesome. They know what they're doing. They oh, live don't the character. Worry. They will cast an, a celebrity in order to get that star power going. Oh, yeah, Remember true. that they need to bring in they need to bring in the big bucks, and I am hoping that they bring some actors from like the the Transformers uh, TV show or something. Oh, like yeah. I can oh, still yeah. see Peter Weller. I can see Peter Weller appearing on. Uh, was it? What's the name of the guy who voices Optimus Prime? Peter Weller, yeah, or Peter, am I confusing? Peter with? Weller. Peter Weller. Yeah, yeah I can. I, I cannot wait to see him voicing a character, and who knows, maybe. Hmm. Like, you're gonna, you know what? I can actually see Peter Weller voice in Star Shield the Bearded, for example. Probably. Yeah. All, all, all that talk there was that Patrick Stewart should be Star Shield the Bearded because then they will combine him with Discord and he will be like Star Trek the next generation. Yeah, yeah I don't think that's gonna happen, but it, yeah, they should have that. It or, would be fun. Hell, hell, uh, you know what? Go one step further. Have Ian McKellen be Star Shield the Bearded. Yeah. He's already Gandalf. Oh. Mm-hmm. If you can get him, if you can get him. But in other good news, uh. Oh no, Chris... hang on a minute, because I just remember what I was going to say. Uh-huh. I think they totally wasted Lion's Gate on there. They wasted the potential joke. Like, they, they shouldn't have gone with them, but with tri- tri- uh, TriStar Pictures. <laughs> Why? Because the logo is a Pegasus. 
Ah. Okay. Just think about that. that just think about that. They should have gone there with TriStar, but now they wish they did. Oh. Hey, but Lionsgate is willing. Well, and still exists. TriStar mm-hmm. uh, got absorbed by Columbia, uh, and now they are the tri- TriStar Columbia Pictures. I think the last movie they, pro- they promoted was Final Fantasy: The, Spir- the Spirits Within. Oh, That's why they are not around anymore. Oh, yeah, but I am hurts. only going back to 2001. I was still conscious and alive back then. That the alcohol hurts. hadn't rotten my brain yet. Oh, Final Fantasy. Oh, wow. That it's movie hurts. Because Man, you become that, fully scorched then. You know what? That movie hurts, but only because of how good it could have been. No. Like, it has the potential to be awesome, and it wasn't awesome. It really <laughs> did. It really did. It could have been great. But no, they completely the, ruined the, it. Pro- oh, the, I, oh, well, we're doing movie reviews, but no, the only problem with the spirit of the film was story. That's the thing. The story, the main character, the whole plot. It's. I'd say the main story is per- is perfectly fine. I think the problem was that they promoted it terribly. No, the I think story it, was that, that movie was. A, I think that movie was a bit ahead of its time, though. No. I, I, to put it in perspective, I'd rather pl- uh, watch that movie seven times than play in one minute of Final Fantasy XIII. Ugh, the corridor, like, fun begins uh, at tw- in t- uh, fun begins make, at make, hour make, 20. Make me, make me choose, okay, would you rather play Final Fantasy XIII or get the electric chair? Ah, uh, let's go to old Sparky. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> uh, Not worth it. Um, uh, I can endure way, the game. The game I can endure, because when you've endured games like Night Trap, Sewer Shark... <laughs> You're saying we are doing more movie reviews right now, Norman? Yeah, we kind are kind of. of building up for it. Aren't we going to review a third time? No, 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 no. Shh. Yeah, that, that's it. That, that, no, 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 no. That, that, that's a secret. That's a secret. I am excited for it. I am excited for it. Hey. We are going to. Hey, anyway. Um, but hey. Yeah, what were you going to say about yeah. news? Yeah, um. <laughs> Lionsgate were taking the risk and, uh, talking about Star Power, right? They got Christina. Kens, uh, Chensworth. Chensworth. Uh, that's how you oh, say her name? Oh, it's a new character. No, yes. no idea. I'm not it. From what I've seen from her INDB, she starred in movies like RV and a few Broadway plays. So that is pretty cool. Yeah, and like, you know, she's won a fair few awards and whatnot. And, you know, she's kept herself busy. I mean, she's proper star power. You know, I mean, it's great to have her in the film. And like you were saying, like the star power is definitely going to help the movie get noticed outside of just this sort of MLP community. I hope that guest actors that appeared on the on the TV show come back. Like I, I want to see Cheese Sandwich again. Mm, well, I, I uh, want to see whatever character is going to voice Lena Hall appear in the movie too. I mean, true. yeah, I, come I, on, I, bring I do, them back. I do agree with you on that, but um, the the thing is with some of the actors that they had before coming back in this one. Okay, I can see it working. But honestly, it's going to be a bit too expensive and over budget for what they're doing. For okay. it's the movie, it's the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic movie. You don't do something like that and just uh, don't expense on expenses. You have to expense expense no expense. Yeah, just go all aboard. Come on, people are gonna people are gonna look at it. They're gonna love it and they're gonna eat it. And you know it. But the thing is, with this, like. Having a star come in, like, okay, let's just say they get Weird L, Lena Hall, and John Delancey is a guest, so he does count. So getting them on the show will cost them a few pennies, but it's worth it. But how long are they going to be in it? Like, uh, Weird L had his own episode. Discord has his, had his own episode. Lena Hall, I'm assuming, had his own. And I got no idea who else is going to be on. So, Getting them onto a movie and having them play a essentially a one minute line read is kind of wasteful. Yeah, but that's oh, kind of who what says it's gonna movies. be one line. I mean, and yeah, it depends on what it is. I mean, like you know, with a movie, you've got like ninety minutes, hundred minutes, you know, usually to play around with, and it depends on what they're doing plot line wise. Like we know we're gonna combat great evil, but we don't know kind of who that's gonna be, how it's gonna work out. I mean, it could be all right, fine, we'll record a couple of lines, but that's you know, easy enough to do. And of course, that means that they get headline inches at the end of the day because then they get to have loads of articles going how we are down, John Delancey and this person, that person, whatever else are doing this and so on. And it gets the publicity wheel going. So you're not just paying for them to do their line. You're paying for the publicity you're getting as a result of well, it. The thing with publicity is you have the marketing team for that. Like, 
um, marketing team's purpose is to spend money to promote the movie. So you got that. No, 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 man. You got it wrong. What? Marketing team is basically promote the movie and make a miracle out of it because we have a limited budget. So there, there you go. Haha, good luck with that, mother. <laughs> uh... Yeah. No, seriously, that's usually how it goes. Why do you think sometimes movies make so much on the box office despite having no commercials or publicity whatsoever? Like, I'm gonna make a terrible example right now, but it's a legit one. Mm. Have you ever seen a commercial or an advert for uh, Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ? No, I haven't. What about you guys? Oh, cricky, we're going back in time. That would be much better than for. Yeah, 2004, yes. Oh, cricky. Uh... I didn't watch much TV in 2004, so I can't say for sure. That was a movie, right? What about you, Ro? Yeah, it was a movie. Mm. Yeah, it was a, it was a no, movie that we not seen that one. Neither have I, and neither... Well, I have watched the movie, but I have never seen a commercial for it. However, it was the third highest grossing movie of 2004, only topped by Spider-Man 2 and Shrek 2. You do know why, right? So, uh no, I... Yeah, of course, because the movie was so controversial, and it was so exploitative, and it was just so extreme that it got everybody mad. Everybody got angry at the movie, and they talked about it. And they talked about it so much that they basically did the publicity for Mel Gibson for free. (laughs) So Mel Gibson didn't have to spend money on promoting the movie. The bad press did it for them, did it for him. And he's like, yeah, it's not bad press, it's just press. There is no bad publicity, there is only publicity. Mm-hmm. That's why everybody was like, dude, this movie is making everybody mad. <laughs> Let's go watch it. <laughs> so that's that's basically how it goes. Because the production budget for a movie, uh, even if it's like a high budget movie, like I don't know, Lord of the Rings or whatever, it's usually $10 million or even less. And that is kind of like national uh, level. So like that will promote it in like the US, uh, the big markets. And that's it. So, uh, with the My Little Pony movie, I don't know how much money they're going to dedicate to it, but I think they're going to let the word of mouth just take care of the promotion uh, for them. They're kind of already doing that, uh, because... We're talking <laughs> have about you it. Seen... Yeah, I mean, we're talking about it. The movie's not even out. I'm pretty sure they're not even done with the voice acting for it, or composing, or hell, even writing the screenplay. The movie's coming out in 2017. Mm-hmm. That is two years ahead of time. And people are already hyped about it. They're already saying, oh yeah, this movie's gonna be great! No. <laughs> One can only hope. Not, One can not, only hope. No way, not, not knowing, not looking at, hmm, let's see Hasbro's track record of movies based on their properties. We have Transformers, Transformers, uh, Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers, uh, Dark of the Moon, G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra, uh, the second G.I. Joe movie that nobody remembers even exists, yeah, I did. and Transformers, Age of, no, nobody, I said nobody, Norman, shut up. <laughs> and Transformers, Age of Extinction. And hmm. the soon to be oh, okay. of Academy Award winning films. Uh-huh. Uh, say what again? I said, what a great selection of Academy Award winning films. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, you have like seven nominations to the Oscars combined with all those movies there. <laughs> all of them belong to the Transformer movies. Hey, the Transformers movie for its time was re- was rev- rev- revolutionary for its time. Remember, remember that you're talking about the year 2007. Yeah. Revolutionary in 2007 was not Transformers. Revolutionary in 2007 was, oh my god, practical effects on a CGI first of a movie. I can't believe it. They are not using green screen on this shot. I, no, that's impossible. We've come full circle. Revolutionary at this point is, oh my god, something that we used to do before we found computers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. But, but still, but still, back to Christine here. She played a few roles, um, like voice acting roles. Uh, one of those roles were Space Chimps, Tinkerbell, um, Rio 2, Strange Magics. And, well, she does have experience in voice acting. So, hey, that's awesome. And she did do theater on Broadway. So, she, I, I'm guessing she's a really good actor. So, Hasbro getting her is good. So, yeah, I can't wait to see what she's going to do. I can't wait. But talking about actors, like, and talking about Delancey and who was that other guy you talked about just now? Peter, who? Yeah? Peter Weller. Uh, Peter Weller, he played the Xavier, right? Yeah, no, Peter Weller was the voice of Optimus Prime oh, sorry. in the Transformers, in the Transformers <laughs> movies and on the Transformers TV shows. Oh, okay. 
I was thinking that maybe they could have Patrick Stewart boys and stars all the bearded, but I don't think they can afford to get Patrick Stewart mm-hmm. and John Delancey at the same time. Yeah. They will get into too high of a budget. Yeah, but but um, besides that, like we talk about star power, you know, <laughs> we did mention this a lot, like celebrities becoming bronies or are bronies. Um, do you do you want to know who's next on that list? Who? William Shatner. Yeah, oh god, yeah, you talk about that. Oh, I don't even want to say a word about that. Oh. <laughs> John, if he ever gets to appear in the show, I just want his pony to be wearing a fake toupee. <laughs> I just really want that. I just like the idea of him trotting around going, and I'm here. In Equestria. <laughs> uh. And just... <laughs> It's supposed to pay off. I'm sorry. Like, I'm immature. I'm just, I'm gonna walk away. Sorry. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, James, uh, please explain to us who is William Shatner. William Shatner is Captain Kirk from the original Star Trek, and, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, he did do some other shows. Well, yeah, okay. she, uh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. He did appear in Boston Legal, mm-hmm. and... T.J. Hooker. But no, you, you remember him for being Captain oh, Kirk yeah. in Star Trek. Mm-hmm. You remember him for being the womanizer. You remember him for being the the uh, the loose cannon kind of guy who doesn't believe in the no win scenario and being friends with Spock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what you remember him for. Mm-hmm. But another thing is, he he's pro- he's I don't know how or what, but he's a pretty awesome guy. I I do like his personality. He is he has that charm. He has that charisma towards him, but. Recently, Big Jim Miller uh, tweeted to William Shatner saying that I heard you are a fan of My Little Pony. I'm the director for the show. Uh, maybe we should have you guest voice. And Shatner replied, and he's interested. Maybe after September, so probably in season six, he'll be back, and probably he'll be on the show. Not sure if the movie or the series. Um, I'm guessing series because. My Little Pony is starting to become like that one show where every celebrity wants to be on it just because they can have a Pony OC. No. No? No, 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 no. I don't think so. I think the reason why they want to work in the My Little Pony movie is because... No, no, no movie. Series. Has... Well, series, movie, whatever. Hasbro's money is way too attractive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, come on. It's like, that is, that is, that is, it gets, this is very cynical what I'm about to say, but it gets to a point in someone's career that you're not doing it for the art anymore, you're doing it because you want a paycheck. Mm, true that, true that. Because you just bought yourself a jet and you don't know how you're gonna pay for it, so you decide <laughs> to go to a panel at Comic Con. Wow. Or you decide to like sit through a row of fanboys and sign autographs and just smile and say, oh yeah, you're my favorite wow. fanboy and this is the best Jeez. experience I've ever had at a convention. Nice example but, of a jet, like William Shatner, Jet Rocket Man. It is true, Rocket Man. <laughs> na, 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 na. Uh... How to ruin a song in five seconds? <laughs> Let William well, Shatner actually... sing oh. Rocket Man. He also did a cover, I believe. I'm, I'm, I might be imagining this from some sort of hazy dream, but I'm pretty sure he did a cover of "She Blinded Me with, Sci- with Science" by Thomas Dolby. <laughs> Oh, please. Oh. Whatever. Okay, if anybody at Hasbro listens to this, mm-hmm. or if, I don't know, I don't think Emil Arson is listening to us mm-hmm. right now, or, or whatever. Anybody, please, do not let William Shatner anywhere near the singing. No, I want him. Don't no, I want give him. him a song. Give him a no. song. Yes, I am the no, couple. Yes. Because him, then, like, no, no, because then it will him. be a two-part episode. It will be a two-part episode, and it will be just <laughs> William Shatner's pony just singing. In front. You know what? That sounds awesome. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> yes. let's yeah, do that. Exactly. Yeah. Imagine him like doing like the Super Sider Squeeze his excited song. Just him going, now, we've got opportunity. In this very community. Oh, God. He's Flynn. I'm Flam. Of the world famous... The Lumber. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so wrong in my head. No, that's so crazy. wrong. That's so okay, cool. yeah, you know what? 360 change. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, do it. Let him sing. Let him sing. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. But, yeah, I, 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 I don't see any... <laughs> I cannot see this going wrong. The very least, what's going to happen is if we were to sing on the show, that video would be going so viral that it could only help the show ratings go up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. With the show and how it's going, I'm sure like 
people will look at it and it'll be well, one of those shows where it's be- almost becoming like The Simpsons or Family Guy. It it will be good in quality and a lot of stars will want to come on. So I, I don't mind Shatner coming on and doing his shtick. Like, his shtick is his acting. That is his thing. And he does... He's memorable. That's all I can say. He is memorable. Oh, wow. I'm smiling. Oh, you know who they can call? Like, I, I want to see on the show next. Who will you want to see in the show? David Hasselhoff. Oh, really? Uh, that, actually, yeah, because if he were to do a song for My Little Pony, it would involve synthesizers, rock guitars, <laughs> ponies trying for the air, just like, <laughs> we're little ponies flying through the air. <laughs> uh, no, you know, you can, you, you wouldn't be able to do that because then you'll have to turn him into a douche. I don't see people treating David Hasselhoff nicely. Uh, I, do. I don't want him to be a, I don't want him to be a villain. No, I just want him to be on so he can do stuff like him singing. Like, that would be good. <laughs> I don't know why. But to be fair, like, do you remember, like, um, he performed at the, um, when the Berlin Wall got knocked down? Mm-hmm. You know, that he performed, uh, what was it, like, for freedom mm-hmm. when the wall was going down. And I, what I remember hearing, uh, when I was doing my history course and I was researching it was that when he, he was performing a song, like, one of the sort of cranes, you know, cherry pickers that were sort of over the wall. Mm-hmm. And the East Germans were knocking down the wall and they heard him singing. They actually started trying to put the wall back out. <laughs> you for real? <laughs> they just thought, they just thought, oh, this is the West. Oh, I, I don't want to see this. I, I was just thinking, let's just stay in the East. It's much better than this. Uh, you for real? No. So, as you're saying, <laughs> that David knows. Hasselhoff was almost, was too close to making the Berlin Wall go back up. <laughs> He was actually, he actually almost saved communism single-handedly. Oh, no. That's awesome. <laughs> no, no. But you do know that he's pretty popular in Eastern Europe, right? Yeah, he does seem to have a following there in the, in Germany and France and the like. And, which is one of those things, it's up there with, when you hear about bands who are big in Japan, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's kind of like, it's almost like your get out of free card. <laughs> like, oh, that, oh, sorry, we weren't, like, oh, so you did music, but you weren't really successful. Hey, listen, look, I had a big hit in Germany. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you know, it just, there's an element of, I'm not quite sure about it. I mean, like, like, do you remember the show Dallas? Dallas. Like, you know, the, I, I heard of it. Uh-huh. I know uh, Dallas. Yeah, I heard of that one. I never watched yeah, it though. Yeah, huge show from the 80s that, like, a, look it up if you want to look at it. But one of the, uh, there was a female character on it, um, who, um, she was in, I can't remember the name of the character off the top of my head, but the actress who was in it did, a disco single in like '83, like uh, that only that became a number one hit in Germany and only in Germany. <laughs> and I kid you not, it is the most tuneless piece of Euro <laughs> trash I've heard, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> no comment. But like, like um, specific actors being really popular in specific countries. Like you, you guys do know that Tom Cruise is very popular in Japan, right? He even has his own day in Japan, like. Called Tom Cruise Day. Tom Cruise Day. Mm. So, I mean, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, there's no good way for me to segue into this, but Short Factory, you know them. Yeah. Even they promote the My Little Pony DVD. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. And well, with winter coming soon, they are having this special DVD set. Sorry, you said winter is coming. It's a it's a reflex. <laughs> I cannot help it. I cannot suppress it. Uh, but anywho. Uh, they have a, uh, what they call Winter Vacation Double Feature. In this DVD set, they have six episodes, but here's the catch. It's three episodes of My Little Pony and three episodes of Little Pet Shop. And all, uh, all the episodes are winter theme. So, if you are in the holiday tune, um, get this, I guess, because, um, in the My Little Pony series, they have Heartwarming Eve, Thanks for the memories and party poop. Okay, and I'm I'm not hundred percent sure about the pet shop move, uh, shows. Um, I'm guessing they're all winter too. But let's talk about this one for a bit. Like the first uh, heartwarming Eve, I do get that because it's almost like Christmas. Thanks for the memory is yeah something to do with hibernation. Uh-huh. Party poop because the jacks live in the north. Why does it have to, like, the only... <laughs> because at one point, Pinkie Pie goes on a sledge. Ah, uh, yeah, but... It... Okay. 
It kind of, it kind of, it can be considered wintery if you squint your eyes, don't look to the left, and decide to put some sunglasses on. It's fine. Uh, um, you can still do that. Ah, uh, oh, come on, Norman, stop making, stop making all personal. No, it's uh, just, mm, it's uh, just that. Uh, I need to have my bag changed. Ah, uh, you. No, but it's just that party poop was really not that wintry of an episode. Oh, come on, it had a snow in it. That's fine. That's all you need. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Seriously, dude, come on. Now you're, ne- you're nitpicking. Oh, you hate the show no. now. Who are you going to... Are you going to join Tommy Oliver now? No. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Come on. No, the, the thing is, when, we, when we're talking about winter stories, like, I, I, I do understand that, okay, Party Poop does feature snow, but, <laughs> like, if that's the only criteria for an episode... Featuring snow. Didn't they had any? Like, winter wrap-up. That had snow. Yeah, but that's the end of winter, not the beginning of it. Yeah, you could put it at part three. So, yay, end of the My Little Pony saga and go to the pet shops. Like, My Little Pony saga? Yeah, the, the, the three part... What in God's <laughs> godly name are you blathering about? I don't know. I'm trying to think of something. Ah. Trying here being the keyword. Hmm... <clears throat> I'm being surprisingly mean to you, Norman. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are mean. I don't know. I kind of have it out of out for you today or something. I'm like, wow, yeah. I'm really coming down on you like a like a rain on fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, it, with winter's coming, and everybody likes presents, and why not give someone the gift of? Pony merch with the f- new series of Funko Minis. You remember those Funko Minis where they feature uh, the Funko vinyls but in miniature sizes? I think so. Oh, yes. Yeah, now uh, Series 2 is out and they have a few selections like uh, Nightmare Moon, Princess Luna, Princess Celestia, Princess Cadence, Queen Crystalis, Shining Armor, Spikes, Kutulu, the well, basically the CMC, Mod Pie, and Cheese Sandwich. So that is a whole plethora of characters to get. And the best part about this one is only three of the characters are black, which is Cheese Sandwich, Spike, and Cadence. <coughs> so if you do get some of the other characters, they're all going to be normal color. So yay. I never understood why making the characters like, um, you know, that gothy. Yeah, it's it's like, it's like, oh, this is for the dark people. Mm. The, the ones that, they want something that hard. Is, that is true. I mean... Black is, black is a very hardcore color. Like, I, I, I relate the color black with like, a heavy metal, goth music, kind of like, tun, 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 kind of like, well, you know, that kind of thing. So it's like, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, hmm, who will get a toy that is primordially black? True. But, I just noticed something so, like uh, Nightmare Moon is black, so she gets a free pass. Yeah, she kind of. Well, yeah, she does. I guess she does. Yeah. Yeah, but I do understand what you mean. Like, why make it black? Like, the whole yeah. the whole appeal of the uh, vinyls or the ponies are their vibrant colors. So why put them black? Then again, why make some of the Funkos transparent? Oh well, those are. Lucky draws, limited kind of deal. So if you're lucky enough to get them, awesome on you. They haven't even reached up Spain yet, mm. so this th- and they charge up the. That's not a word. With the ship, oh, in, so tell me about it, man. Yeah. With how the ringgit now is, like it's times three point nine for oh. the ringgit. Oh, you poor little. Oh, you poor little thing. That's yeah. Well, yeah, I know American dollars. Like uh, one, one American dollars is to 3.9 ringgit. So, I'm almost paying triple or quadruple the price for whatever it is it I want to buy and including not including shipping. Oh, that's going to be hard. Well, I'm a million years away to ever get in a budget for any of those. Well, you're in euro. So, the euro is um, much stronger than the dollar, right? Yes, the euro right now is a lot stronger than the dollar. But you're forgetting I'm a starving uh, when, artist. When you compare, when you compare to the pound, um, one dollar right now is like, well, no, one euro is 83 uh, cents of a dollar. Mm. And the last time I checked, and I think one pound is like 50 cents of a dollar. Mm. Wow. 
So yeah, the the the, 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 the pound is usually doing the strongest, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure if it's the strongest coin in the world. I'm not sure if that is the Japanese yen or something. I'm not entirely sure. I am not, as you can clearly tell, a stockbroker, yeah. so I don't. I have no idea about how the market changed, market values. Yeah, yeah. But I, I actually should look into mm-hmm. that. I, I am an artist for commission worldwide. I should be interested in this kind of thing. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But still, but still. Yeah, that's one of my big questions. Yeah, but still, at least these are available for anybody who's going to buy them. I know I I know I ain't getting this anytime soon, so I'll just have to wait and hope that they come. If not, I'll just have to hope that I go to Buck and buy it there. <sighs> Speaking of Buck, who is going? I'm trying to. I'm hoping I can go. But like I said, with the ringgit now at a really hard spot, it's virtually hard for me to decide anything. And it's still in April. Hmm... Hard, so hard. You going, James? No, I'm uh, not. Ro, you going? No, I don't think I'll be able to go to Brony Sky this year oh. either. Oh. oh no! What about you, Kyle? Are you going to Brony to to Buck? Uh, I'm not making it to Buck, uh, but I am going to be a Brony Sky. So. Yay! There's something. But hey, um, talking about cons, like Brony Con is happening kind of in the past. So by the time you listen to this, it's done. But hey, a fan listener to the show and a friend of ours, uh, Wills. Is it James? Yeah, that's Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. He met up with Silver Quill. That's really awesome. Yeah, I saw, I saw the picture. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, I hope they had fun. And this is kind of out of time loop. But if you did go to BronyCon and you did see Silver say hi to him, or you did say hi to him, hope you guys had a good time. Take a picture, take a lot of pictures with him. He's a pretty awesome guy from what we heard in person. And we talk to him on a regular basis. So, yay. Yeah, we are horse famous by proxy. <laughs> oh. You wish. <laughs> ah, you wish. But anyway, anyway, uh, guys, we reach our end. We reach our end. What? Yep. You get me out of my art in funk and like I was so happy watching the making of The Hobbit and all that and you pull me out of here just for a 50 minute long show? Yay. You're kidding. Ah. It's one of those episodes, man. It's one of those episodes. I'm going to kill you, Norman. I'm going to kill you. I just have to blow very hard while you're next to a window and you will fly away. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, if you you tr- while you try and do that, James, the audience at home, if they have any... <laughs> <laughs> hey Kyle, what are you doing and joining in? I'm meeting us a double front. <laughs> Europe are coming for you. <laughs> yeah, we'll kill him with Oy. a tomato. Stop it. Hold on, let me get my <laughs> hair dryer. Yes, exactly. Get your hair dryer. Come on, we can do this all together. Uh, but anyway. Norman, you better get, take it, get, get a belt ready. Tie yourself up to the bed or something, or tie yourself to something and get yourself prepared. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting blown. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, yeah, oh. I was uh, waiting for someone to say it. I was waiting. I'm glad it was you, Norman. Thank you. That was me. Uh, it was you, Rob. <laughs> you thought it was Norman, but it was me! Dior! Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. If you'd like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. Also, if you would like to reach us on Twitter... The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sudi Bell will be on promoting this and other stuff. So keep an eye on her. And if you want to reach me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, foods, and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently tickling my fancy is Magic the Gathering. Yay. <laughs> and what about you, James? Uh, well, you know, the typical James Cork on Twitter, James Cork on DeviantArt, and check my ass blog on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. There you All go. right, Ro? You can always find me at Twitter at Relicious underscore Art. I tweet about random stuff and waifus. <laughs> lots of lots of gem waifus. <laughs> oh, you mean, oh, I saw that Rose Quartz picture. That was awesome. Yeah, so did the other gems. Yeah. All of the gems. Yeah. Oh, I, I may have a problem. I recently heard on a podcast uh, a, a good analogy that someone compared uh, Steven Universe is to Dragon Ball. What? Yeah, like explaining how the show is 
is like Dragon Ball. If Pico and Ten are uh, fused together, like uh, it, it was pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting. I'll probably link it. Like it's on the Best Friends Cast episode one hundred four. Um, go listen. They're awesome. And Kyle, what about you, man? Well, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall, where you find out about any writing projects I'm doing. And of course, Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, uh, my interview show on the High on Bronies YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com forward slash High on Bronies. And our latest interview was actually with the nutritious, delicious, delicious. <laughs> Hello. And it's, and it's a really good show. You know, I, <laughs> let me just talk about that show for a moment before you close sure, sure. it. Because if you, ha- if you heard until this point, you're one of those persons that, you're one of those people that like to listen to long podcasts where like there is a lot of topic change, everything, all that. That's fine, but not everybody is like that. Uh, there's people who just want to listen to a short, quick interview. They know about the person. They get the information out. Great. Perfect. There is no dilly dally, nothing like that. It's, it goes straight to the point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what that show is all about. And that's really good because we need more shows like that. Less shows with me in them. <laughs> That <laughs> I am very self-aware that I that I am the one that makes this show go on for longer. I like to overcompensate. <laughs> uh, don't read too much into that. <laughs> there is no sock on my pants or anything. But <laughs> there is there is uh, an audience for everything. And if you are the type that likes short, sweet TV, sh- uh, t- nah, well, TV shows or podcasts or whatever, check out Kyle's because it's really good like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. They do a pretty good show. They do a pretty good show. I was on last time and hearing how long I had to talk, I, I had to hold myself down from talking too long and explaining too long because uh, Diane or Sugar Dove had us on a 30-minute time limit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it is like a sort of talking version of like the Crystal Maze or some sort of 90s game show where you've got to try, you've got a time limit, you've got a goal and you've just got to go for it. And like, I mean, I've had all three of you on, you've all been absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, well, not that I would expect anything otherwise. I mean, it's you three, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, just, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, it was, we'll have to have you guys on for season two. Oh, sure, man, sure. Like, um, I cannot wait to come back to it. Yes. Kyle, you want chaos? If you want chaos, invite the three of us at the same time. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking we could, oh, it could be so good. Uh, oh no, Diane will kill you. Diane will kill us. Oh, she'll kill me. No, she'll kill me, but you know, that's fine. I mean, like, you know, I'm just a mouth by microphone. I don't actually have a body, so it's fine. But you're a bus drive away. Oh no, I don't need a, like, I don't need a run, walk, or away from her. All I have to do is press the off button on my computer and I'm fine. <laughs> uh, she does know where you live. She does, but she's too lazy to go up the hill, so I know I'm fine. <laughs> Dude, anybody is lazy to go up the hills. The only people who are not lazy to go up the hills are insane people. Uh, and military. Then. Well, I'm loopy. You're loopy, but you're loopy for all the right reasons. <laughs> I know, but oh, we're all Luffy. We're such a lovely bunch. I and mean, we've got Norman uh, there, Mr. Derpity Derp. And we've got James, who is, well, me and him are Luffy in all sorts of great fun ways. And, of course, we've got Relicious there in the corner, who is, oh, how do I describe him? Relicious, uh, do you want to, perhaps you should describe yourself. I love pie. <laughs> that is excellent. Well, and trains, and frogs, and turtles. <laughs> Uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. You know, it's very weird when you realize that, yeah, we are full percent this is a pony show, but holy cow, we talk about almost everything. Yeah, it's the hiatus. Um, yeah. It's going there. It's getting there. That, that, that's what happens. Well, you know who I am. I am Relicious. I'm Kyle McCall. And we'll see you guys next week with another awesome show. Bro, take us out. And we will see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. I'm going to state a rule that bans you from never doing that again. <laughs> I'm so tired of the... You are so tired of the Markiplier stick, and yet you keep embracing it. What? Make up your mind, man. It's the show stick, man. It's what I get paid for. Are you or are you not? Mark- you don't get... Are you getting paid? Is he getting yeah. paid? If he's getting paid, paid then I'm not getting paid. I want to get paid as well. This is stupid. No, come on. I give you now. I give up. I give up. That's it. That's it. I'm giving up my position as the stock Spaniard. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm out. Uh...
nice. benchmark. And that's for like high production movies. That is nice. like for big, big budget movies. Yo. Um, I don't see. What happened? Bro? Hello? Guys? Hello? Okay, I'm here. Are you guys there? I'm here. Bro? James? James? Bro? Alright, okay. Roll call, James. What happened? I don't know. We're all back in. Okay, uh, roll call, James. Guys? Ro? Anyone? Hello? Oh, Craigie, Ro, you're sounding a bit like you're coming through, you're sweeping for a tin can or something. I'm here, I can hear people. Uh, okay, is that, no, it says you, mean, right, Kyle? Yeah, what's, what's that normal? Yeah, it's just you and me, right? Like, we and you talking? Yeah, but did you not hear? Yeah, <laughs> we're speaking right now. Yeah. James and Ro have gone out. Okay, but yeah. I, was, I heard Ro speaking there. Yeah, I heard Ro speaking, I heard James speaking, and. Okay, what the f- hell's going on? Like, everybody. I... What just happened? I don't know. Paul Gibson killed the call. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I think he felt we were, we were ta- talking trash about him and he decided to hack onto everybody's computers 